Hello everybody, this is Eric from Teachers Talking Tech, and I wanted to show you a few ways that you can comment on student work. Now, for this example, I uh, added an activity for students to do about 3D shapes. Okay, so I'm gonna switch to my student view here. Okay, and I'm gonna have this student respond to this template. So it says, circle the picture of the cube. And let's say my student gets that one just fine. But for the next one, for the picture of the cylinder, maybe they make an error, okay? And then the rest of them, maybe they do just fine. Now, one way, once the student turns this work in, that I can leave feedback for them is just by leaving a comment. So I'm gonna click on this gray bar here. Aha, uh -huh, there's Sam's work, so I'm gonna review it. Okay, now of course I can leave a comment Oops, looks like you missed the cylinder. Now, this feedback might not be very useful for the student for a number of reasons. First, they might not be a strong reader. Also, it, it can be a lot for the teacher to type out like, great job on number one, two, and four, but number three, that's a lot of writing. Now, of course, you could do a voice comment. Right over here with the microphone, I could say, Sam, this is great. It looks like though, on number two, you circled a picture of a sphere. Actually, the cylinder is the battery. Okay, so that's a little bit better because now my student can hear in my voice that even though I'm being critical, I'm not, uh, my voice isn't sounding mean or upset with them, right? Which sometimes when you type things out, it can sound that way unintentionally. Now I'm gonna show you another way that I love when I'm leaving feedback for students because I can really show them through video what they did that was wrong, okay? Now this works in the journal and with activities. What you're gonna do as the teacher is you're gonna tap on the three dots under the post and click edit item. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna open up that student item where you can now make changes. Now I could do something like, I don't know, maybe an arrow that's pointing to this and I could add, um, a label that says, you know, whatever. Now I wouldn't actually put oops, but <laughs> just for this example, okay? So you could just do something like that. Now here's what I like to do. What I like to do is I like to leave a video recording of what went on there. So I click on the microphone and I start a voice recording. All right, now when I do that, you'll notice I now have an arrow tool. Hey, Sam, this looks great. This is definitely a cube. Oh, good job in this cone. One thing I'm noticing though is this says cylinder. I don't think this is a cylinder here. That's a sphere. The cylinder is the battery. So I want you to go back into this and I want you to circle the battery instead because that's our cylinder. So now that I recorded that video, what Seesaw does is it puts that video over top of the original which if you want the student to be able to go back and make the changes, what I would suggest is making that a bit smaller and moving it over to the side where the student can watch it. You can even add a label on top of that that says like, watch this. And you could also add like a little arrow so that the student knows that they need to watch your video on how they need to make corrections. Other times I won't do that. I'll just record it and I'll actually circle the correct answer and I will delete the wrong answer just so I can show them and correct their work for them. Either way works, it really depends on your feedback style. Once you're done, you just click on the check mark and it will update that student work. You'll still need to go back in and then do your final approval or if you have the paid version of Seesaw, you could send it back to them. Either way, they're going to see your updates and they're gonna know that they need to go in and make some changes. Now, last thing I wanna say is if you don't have this send back button, if you're using the free version of Seesaw, what you can do is you can say in the comments, uh, I want you to change some things. And then on the student end of things, one option that they have using those three dots as well even if they don't have the paid version, they can actually go back in and edit the item as well. So when they do that, they're gonna see your video and then they can go back in and make the changes necessary 
and then they can resubmit the work to you that way too. So even if you don't have the paid version, that is a workaround where your students can update their work based on your feedback. All right, I hope this was helpful for you. I know it's really helpful for me when I have, uh, have students doing distance learning and I'm trying to leave voice comments that will really help them. All right, this is Eric from Teachers Talking Tech.